The oceans are home to hundreds of thousands of species, but they are also essential for lives and livelihoods above sea level. At any one time, one million seafarers are at work on ships. These men and women often go to sea for months at a time to transport the food we eat, the energy that keeps us warm, and the medicines that save lives. When they go home, their incomes sustain their families and wider communities. But when the pandemic struck, hundreds of thousands of seafarers were left stranded at sea and unable to go home. Far away from their loved ones for months beyond the end of their initial contracts, facing physical and mental exhaustion. The longer you stay out there, the more fatigue you get physically. And the hours start to add up, the, the weeks and months start to add up. None of us signed up for that. We just, we wanted to go to work, do our bit, and then come home. Um, we didn't sign up for this sort of what felt like a, a, an unwanted prison sentence, an unjustified prison sentence. IMO acted decisively. Our Seafarer Crisis Action Team directly helped hundreds of men and women return home safely, and we urged governments to facilitate crew changes. This is making a significant difference. As more countries responded to IMO's call, the number of stranded seafarers has gone down, from a peak of 400,000 in November 2020 to 200,000 in March 2021. And we continue to work with other UN agencies such as the International Labour Organization, to ensure seafarers' rights are respected, allowing them to work safely and keep supply chains going for all of us. Seafarers are not the only ones to call the ocean their workplace. Across the world, millions of fishers rely on resources from the sea, but their profession is one of the most dangerous on the planet. It's uh, a matter of life and death, really, that over 20,000 people lose their lives at sea every year because of the unregulated uh, state of the fishing industry. To make the profession safer, IMO is supporting countries to ratify and implement a set of international rules on the safety of fishing vessels, known as the Cape Town Agreement. So far, around 50 states indicated their intention to ratify the treaty. When the agreement enters into force, it will improve the safety of life at sea and help fight illegal, unregulated, and unreported fishing, therefore protecting the resources at the heart of those lives and livelihoods. To protect livelihoods above sea level in the long term, we need to preserve life underwater. IMO regulations have cut oil spills from ships and stopped ships from offloading plastic into the sea. IMO is also leading a series of projects to preserve the marine environment, protect biodiversity, and limit the spread of invasive species. 17 specific zones, known as particularly sensitive sea areas, have been designated by IMO. Ship routing measures have been specifically tailored to protect their fragile ecosystems and the livelihoods who depend on them. Only by protecting those habitats will we protect the roots and workplaces that the oceans make possible for all of us.